Hello, dear ones, and welcome to Subtle Medicine Radio, brought to you by Inner Spark. This is the resource for all things holistic healing, natural living, conscious relating, epic life changing, and spirituality, all steeped in earth based wisdom. We're your hosts, Devin. And I'm Mike. On today's show, episode 12, we're discussing the importance of nervous system care for the sensitive soul, how empaths, light workers, highly sensitive people, and the like can ground their energies and come into right relationship with their power how trauma and stress play a role in this population's special extrasensory abilities, and how this also makes them more susceptible to the ill effects of stress, and how to combat it. So let's dive in. All right. Before that, though, real quick. On last week's episode, I made a comment about how a current client was triggering me, and I immediately had two clients reach out to say, sorry, if I was referring to them. And so, first of all, when I say trigger, I always mean it in a positive way. I love being triggered. Being triggered awakens me from autopilot and habitual ways. Being triggered mirrors to me how far I have come or where there is an opportunity for deeper learning and growth. In that particular instance, I was being triggered by the client in question in the best of ways. She is me a few years ago. And because I know what's possible for her, and I, I know what's possible from that current state that she's in right now, this kind of like chrysalis. And I know what's possible when somebody in that space shows up with love and consistency and compassion and uses the amazing resources I offer. It makes me excited, giddy, and like just downright impatient. And that's my cue to back off, to release attachments to outcomes and to simply be the midwife, the space holder, and the hollow bone. I'm sorry, uh, what, what's a hollow bone? A hollow bone is a shamanic term. It refers to releasing the ego, being a hollow conduit, a channel. Okay. Yeah, that's something I say before all my sessions. I am a hollow bone. Vocabulary lesson for the day. Thank there you. There you go. I see everyone in their highest, and I feel into their potentiality right away. So if I'm ever triggered by a client, it's because I am stepping into a space of fierce love and fierce grace and the mama wolf is coming out. And like I said, that's my cue to reflect, to to see myself in them, and to release attachment to allow their process to unfold. And so thank you for triggering me, and thank you for showing up for yourselves, and thank you for riding these waves with me. And as soon as I said all of that to her, she was like, oh, well, no, I didn't think you were like talking shit about your clients. Anyone who knows you knows that you would never do that. I was just sorry, like, if I drain you or make you feel impatient. And that was so precious to me because that's just her projections, right? That's her story and her projecting maybe some of the ways that she feels about herself onto me or maybe some of her impatience onto me. And I just, I found that so, so precious. And especially this, this actually is perfect segue for today's episode because she is such a highly sensitive person and an empath and a budding light worker like I she definitely has magic inside of her that's going to be offered to the world she might not know it yet holla you know who you are you're listening right now anyways um yes this this population myself and included in that we are so over caring about others and about our impact on others and so the real medicine is to allow ourselves to be held and the container that I create with her and with my clients is that safe container to be held. I don't feel drained or, you know, um, super impatient or angry or any of these other things with, with my clients because this is all part of it. This I do my work so that I am always at my best and, and in a position to be strong enough to hold the space. And I allow them to to unfold and, and come out of their, their chrysalis as well. And I love the work that I do. It truly energizes me and enlivens me. And I have patience for, I mean, eons when it comes to, to my clients. And that's really funny to me. And that's, that's an area, again, that segues perfectly into this episode, is understanding where your particular flavor of patience and steadfastness lives. And so when it comes to other things like, technical things or logistical operational things or uh, like putting together furniture or doing a puzzle. I don't have patience for that. Those things make me crazy. Absolutely nuts. 
And so, thank the gods and the goddesses and all unseen beings and seen beings for my partner and the way that we complement each other and the container that, that we've created. So, interesting segue, I know. Hopefully you follow with me and um, see how it relates to today's show. Babe, do you have anything to add to that before we move into today's episode? Yeah, I think seeing where your energies are at and where your passion lies can be a really great insight because you might just think, oh, I'm not a patient person or I'm not a passionate person. And maybe you just haven't found where your passion lies. And when you are doing something that you love and enjoy, you can spend hours doing it and then just wonder where the day went. So I think that that's a very good insight. Absolutely. And going against that is, I mean, that's like the antithesis of self-care and the importance of knowing yourself, which is part of today's show. So right. let's get into it. So sensitive souls, empaths, intuitives, clairs, you know, all the clairs, clairvoyant, clairaudient, clairsentient, etc., light workers, highly sensitive people. These are all terms used to describe a sliver of the population that is incredibly sensitive, tuned in, and almost like a little antenna. If an antennae, antennas, what's the plural of antenna? Antennae? <laughs> okay, if you missed last week's episode, we talked all about light workers in particular, with some references to these other titles, so check that out if you missed it. And while they are all slightly different, and many have spent lots of time debating them and then proudly adopting a label, for the sake of today and simplicity, there's something all of these people have in common, and that's a super delicate nervous system. And this super delicate nervous system is more easily impacted by the effects of stress and trauma than others. And this makes it absolutely imperative like non-negotiable, super important for their physical, emotional, mental, and energetic health to love on their systems like it is their job. So if I can put on my nerd hat for a second, there was a conversation that you and I were having a couple days ago about empaths, and I had brought up a Star Trek episode where, <clears throat> and yeah, uh, growing up watching Star Trek, I actually learned a lot of life lessons from the show, not gonna lie. One of the episodes was about a very empathic person who had a difficult time separating the feelings that she was subtly picking up from others from her own feelings. And that drove her crazy and she was headed towards a monastery to become a nun because she just wanted to be shut in a cell for the rest of her life and not have to deal with other people and their influences. Sure, it's a crazy episode of a sci-fi set in outer space, but a lot of the messages are still the same, and that was a really great lesson for me on what uh, being an empath means. And I still catch myself in it today, where I question sometimes if I'm doing something because it's something that I actually want to do, or if it's something that I know is expected, or if it's something that I'm doing to please somebody else. And so self-care for an empath is something that I see as being extremely important, because you might lose track of yourself and or drive yourself crazy trying to meet some needs and desires that aren't even your own. Yeah, and let's just make it clear that it goes just beyond, because I, I feel like what you may be talking about is being able to empathize with empaths and knowing the struggle of just, you know, societal expectations versus like these are people that are literally soaking in like the vibes and imprints of other people on top of having the pressure of the programming and societal expectations. So it's like double whammy on top of already the delicate nervous system. Then those two things add even more stress. And so it's like to reiterate what what we've said so far, it's super duper important to to care for all levels of their being like like it's a job. Absolutely. So as you've heard me say a million times before and you'll hear me say a million times again, stress and trauma are compounding. They stack and layer on top of each other. It's like a bucket collecting water droplets from a leak. The bucket can take a little bit for a really, really long time until finally it's full and then it begins to leak. And stress and trauma, when left to lay in our system and create stagnation, end up serving as the root of any dis-ease we experience in our physical lives, period. This is what I refer to as the subtle creating the gross. 
and I'd invite you to check out our episode entitled The Disease Process, episode three, for more on this concept. That's such a rad episode. Go check it out. So many of the sensitives, and I use that as kind of an umbrella term for this group of people, many of the sensitives developed these abilities as a result of enduring trauma. But let me back up real quick. We all have these abilities to some degree, every single one of us. And for those of us who have been through trauma, particularly in the childhood years, when we're still quite open to our abilities, we really hone in on these skills and take them with us into adulthood. The shadow side of this is when we continue to use these abilities out of the fear and hypervigilance we use them for during childhood, rather than putting them to use elsewhere and transmuting this trauma and the residual impacts thereof, like we discussed in the Why Letting Go is Bullshit episode, episode number 10. So this way of being is also the hallmark of a light worker, this transmuting trauma into purpose, and serves as the way to come into right relationship with your power. Because this, this transmutation process and owning your creatorship and realizing that you are the creator of your experience and not a victim is your power. That is the most radical responsible, the most radical exercise of self-responsibility and true power that any human being can, can undergo. And it's, in my opinion, what truly separates us from other beings is this, this ability, this amazing, creative, powerful ability. So many people who fall into this sensitive category aren't even aware of this part of themselves and they shun it and feel ashamed of their perceived differences and weirdness. And once we become aware of how special we are and how these are all sacred gifts, we can begin to take the power back, reclaim ourselves, and get out of this state of chaos, fatigue, anxiety, and other ill effects that are nothing more than a worn-out nervous system that is running energy improperly. So all of these residual impacts, are nothing more than a worn out nervous system. So the body is just like holding all of this old crap and doesn't understand what to do with it. It's running energy improperly and the messages that are being delivered to the body that the body is still habitually holding on to this fight or flight and fear is is what is causing the chaos and the dis-ease and the fatigue and the anxiety. And these gifts have become shadows in many of us who aren't yet aware or are just coming to terms with our authentic selves under layers of trauma. When we use these gifts as gifts and not survival mechanisms, our systems relax. Many health problems disappear entirely. Our bodies change, our relationships improve, our work becomes clearer. It's like someone turned on the lights for the first time. It's truly remarkable how the body will respond. Once engaged fully in our path of higher consciousness and healing, we require more stability and self-soothing than ever as our systems unwind and arrive. It's, It's like this. You ever notice how the healing crises occur after the threat? It's like when I quit drinking. That's when the work actually began. Quitting drinking was easy. I just didn't drink. I just stopped and didn't consume alcohol. That was actually easy. It's what's underneath it all when I finally decided to look at the, the unprocessed emotions and the things that were driving me to make these really poor choices that, like, you know, shit actually hit the fan in my system. So highly sensitive people, empaths, lightworkers, anyone dedicated to this level of consciousness and internal wilderness backpacking, as I like to say, require extra self-care, self-love, and gentleness. Many sensitives actually have a variety of physical health problems as a result of living with a misuse of power and improperly running energy, aka a wonky as fuck nervous system. Specifically, things like chronic fatigue, chronic pain, adrenal problems, thyroid issues, hormonal imbalances, insomnia, many environmental and food allergies and sensitivities, and more. These are things that that kind of plague this population more than others. This is what I see the most. So supporting the physical body and treating these specific symptoms, because it's not like the hypothyroidism is the actual thing. It is a symptom of an underlying subtle imprint that needs to be addressed. So while we support the, the physical body and the specific symptoms and messengers therein, While working with the energetics, you know, physical healing can happen, and and quite profoundly. So 
So how, how do we do this? What do we do this? What are some tactics that we can employ and that are seemingly especially resonant with, with this sensitive group? Safeguard your senses. What is your most sensitive sense? Is it sight, sound, touch? What for you is your most sensitive sense? This may be how your intuition speaks to you as well. How are you nourishing and protecting this sense? For me, it's my eyes and my ears pretty equally. And you might have more than one. Um, if I like had to pick eyes or ears, I don't know if I could. <laughs> They're really pretty equal. So like I detest screens. I really do. After a period of time, I just have to like be done. And I actually have those orange glasses, the um, blue light blocking glasses that I will wear in the evenings if we're going to be around screens because my eyes are just like, nah. And they actually protect the pineal gland that releases the sleep ho hormone melatonin. So if you're looking at screens, you know, in the, in the hour or two before bed, which honestly we really shouldn't be doing, it's nice to be quiet and relax and, and unwind. Anyway, if you are doing these things, that can protect the pineal gland so that you still secrete melatonin and sleep nice and soundly and deeply and restoratively, which is also super important for the sensitive folk. Um, I also, for the ears, I wear these like giant, if you've ever been on my Facebook lives with me, I, I've shown these before. Um, get into my group if you are not there and you can see my earmuffs. And also just, I mean, it's a really rad place to be with awesome resources and really amazing souls so come connect with us but these earmuffs i wear are like they're intended for you know being on a shooting range or working in a freaking like rocket launch pad but i will just wear them while i'm trying to concentrate or if i just need just a time out and it's not like like our house is loud you know it's it's actually quite pleasant and we live in the middle of nowhere but this is me stepping into deeper levels of self-care and not really, you know, minding that I might look ridiculous or whatever other stories. Oh, Devin, you're so sensitive. Why do you need to wear these earmuffs? Like no one else is walking around looking like a fool. You just blah, blah, blah. Whatever the stories are, that's me saying, you know, I require this. I am honoring my need. So get past the weirdness or whatever your story is and honor the need and just notice that like... It's such a subtle shift, but it's so profound what it what that can do when you step into just the simplest things like my ears are sensitive. I'm going to get earmuffs or when I sit in my office, there is a draft. So I'm going to wear a little scarf while I'm sitting at my desk and oh, it's the middle of July and people are looking at me like I'm crazy. Who gives a shit? <laughs> because this is you honoring and protecting yourself and your needs and your boundaries. Something else to employ, and you've heard me talk about this so many times because it's so important, daily rituals and routines. What makes you feel connected and alive and safe? Do more of this. Babe, what's something that makes you feel connected, alive, and safe? Walking outside, having some just alone time with me in the sky and the earth beneath my feet. Just taking in that big breath and feeling, I know it might sound silly, but one with the wind. It's something that I had an insight into in childhood was that when you're touching the air, it's the same air that's like touching everything else. So that was just a little image of connectivity for me that made me feel very personally attached to the world around me. Mm, I love that. And I see you doing this every day, basically every single day. So that's him honoring his need for that. So bring feelings of safety to your body daily. And this can look like self-pleasure practices, meditation, movement, breath work, dancing, snuggling, laying on the ground, chanting, praying, reading, baths, massages. Explore all of the amazing resources available to you. And, you know, something I will hear from people is either I don't have money to spend on this or I don't have the time. And everything I just shared in that list was free and available to you all the time. And that not having time piece, I mean, I think we should just do a show on that. <laughs> I could go down a whole rant about that. You do. It is a matter of taking the time 
and holding it sacred and scheduling it and making it happen. It's a choice. So choose the most nourishing option and let that story that tells you that there is no time or whatever it is or you're unworthy or whatever, think it, witness it, be with it and choose another option. Okay. Some more tactics. Nature, daily, like we just talked about, and um, flower essences and oils and all of the plant medicines can bring such healing and stability and grounding to all levels of our being, physically, emotionally, mentally, and energetically. There are plant medicines for everything at any time. And I think, yeah, in the flower essence episode, that was episode two? Yes, episode two. We talked all about the different types of plant medicines and how these can support us. So if that's something that calls to you, I highly recommend checking that episode out. Taking ample alone time. So really taking time to center and to restore and to rejuvenate and like not being sorry about that. Asking for your needs to be met, asking for support in that. If you have children, for example, making that happen because look, children or no children or, you know, if you have a a job or own a business or however it looks in your life when you show up restored and replenished and with your cup full you are at your best and everyone else that depends on you knows it and receives the best of you and it's also it's in service to the collective like it's just like what we were talking about last week we are all so freaking connected that any type of harm done to myself is harm done done to the whole when I do well to myself and well by myself and and replenish and and restore, that's also for the collective as well. That's in service to the whole. And lastly, and this list is by no means extensive or exhaustive, but one of my most favorite ways to just kind of come into myself and to replenish and restore is to lay on the ground. Like there is no better way to ground one's energy and to kind of combat this frenetic, expansive, out there feeling that, that so many of us can can <laughs> fall into than just laying on the ground. Like letting mama hold you, completely surrender, and, and just be held and be loved. So those are some of my suggestions. Do you have anything to add to this list or anything? Any insights, questions, comments, musings? Right. Well, one, I was wondering about those uh, earmuffs that you wear and if <laughs> your Facebook group would appreciate it, if maybe I took a bedazzler to them, like just make them fabulous for the, the screen. <laughs> you love sparkly things, right? I do love sparkly things. So, yeah. But seriously, though, being unashamed, and you don't necessarily have to put on bedazzled earmuffs, but uh, yeah, just doing whatever you need to do to take care of you. I think that is very important and it's also important to realize that sitting with earmuffs on might not be the thing that other people want but if you're going to show up and do the things that need to be done then you need to take care of you so everybody else can get what they want later you know we can show up and be the friend, be the sibling, be the employee, the employer, whatever our relationship is to the rest of the world. But first, we got to take care of ourselves and do whatever that is and however that looks uh, in a completely unashamed sort of way. And I know part of that that I've had to learn in the context of relationship and marriage is that that doesn't always necessarily mean uh, participation. So somebody can be supportive of whatever weird thing that you feel like doing. That does not necessarily mean that they have to participate. Mm -hmm. And you know, the being unafraid to do something alone is a big hurdle that I think a lot of people need to get over in order to really get into some good self care. Mm -hmm. So if you, you know, uh, have some kind of shouting yoga thing that you're going to go do, hey, I'm going to give you uh, your space and totally respect <laughs> that. And knowing also that if I have something that I want to do, I can go do that for me and respecting each other's space while supporting each other's uh, self-support is a huge part of what I think a healthy and sustainable relationship is. I'm glad you, you offered that relationship piece. That's a very good point. 
And it also, you know, it takes a certain level of self-awareness to even understand and be able to identify, like, what do I need? So if you're kind of in the early stages of this and you are tuning in and realizing, like, okay, the way that things are currently set up for me right now aren't working because I am not feeling well. I am feeling, you know, however it is that is not in alignment with how you desire to feel. That's beautiful. Awareness is the first step. So really tune into that. And if you're still kind of there and when you take it a step further and and ask, okay, so what do I need? And you're kind of getting crickets. That's fine. Stick with it. This is something that so many of us have numbed out of because we've been taught that having needs is selfish or weak weak or for most of us who fall into the sensitive category on whatever level whatever part of the spectrum we've been told that you know we're too damn sensitive or too needy or we complain too much we are we're so needy so we have shunned it even more so we have that plus the the societal conditioning that you know weak it's weak to need it's selfish to need it's it's also, I, you know, it's, it's unspiritual to need things because that shows that you're in lack. Well, no, all of that is complete bullshit, quite frankly. And so if, if you are tuning in and you're asking and you're getting crickets, keep with it. This is like an atrophied muscle that you are strengthening all over and coming into right relationship with. So showing up with compassion and presence and consistence and continuing to hold the question of what is it that I need and doing a four level check in. I, I have a resource on my blog about this, tuning in and, and connecting to your physical, your emotional, your mental and spiritual levels and just just noticing what's up. So when you make more time to check in and observe, the needs will begin to reveal themselves and they will reveal themselves more easily. And from that place, you can begin to, to meet them, you know, and there's so many different ways. So if the need is rest or uh, silence, there are so many different beautiful ways to meet that. And so that's the next part of that would be getting some amazing tools in your toolbox and connecting with people like me who have made it their their mission and their purpose to kind of curate these really amazing resources from so many different modalities to really serve us in various times because we're all unique and every metaphorical season and literal season brings different needs and different challenges and so we're always staying very fluid and very aware and so just keep showing up and know that there is nothing wrong with you you are not needy. You are not too sensitive. You are a beautiful soul who is here for a purpose that has been through a lot and is coming into right relationship with that, coming into right relationship with their power, learning how to transmute trauma and challenge into gifts. And it's a beautiful process. And along that process, you need to simply come to terms with the fact that you are a sensitive being and require a little more TLC, period. Like, there's, that's, that's it. There's nothing good, bad, right, wrong. It is what it is. And the more that we can honor that and, and identify those needs and meet those needs, the better off we will be, the better equipped we are to share and to serve. And, you know, the world is a better place because it's an interesting time, my love, and we need to step up. So there. Okay, well, thanks. I think that is uh, all the time we've got. All right. Thank you. Thank you all. That is all the time we have today. If you loved the show and want to learn more, be sure to subscribe to it. Please leave us a review on iTunes, share with a friend, and visit www.innerspark.life to learn more. We would love to hear your thoughts or questions about today's show, so deepen the conversation with us on social media at InnerSparkLife on Instagram and Facebook. And catch us next time when we'll discuss embodiment and movement practices for growth and healing. So much love to you until then.